Now we shall see some stories about disappearing islands because of global heating and rise in the ocean levels. The first topic we shall deal is extinction of islands. To begin with, we shall take up the case story of Ghoramara Island in India, which is under potential threat of sinking down and disappearance. This island is situated in the eastern part of India as shown in the map. It has an area of 1.8 square miles in size, which is just half the size as it was 20 years ago. This has created a migration problem to the locals to move and resettle to another place. The rising sea levels and frequent coastal floods and storms have already damaged the rice crop fields with saline water and eating away the beetle leaf crops, which is the sole cash crop the residents could rely on. South Talpati or the New Mure Island was a small oval shaped island in the Bay of Bengal off coast Ganga Brahmaputra Delta region. It emerged in the aftermath of Bhola cyclone in 1970 and then disappeared in March 2010. It is said that the island disappeared because of rise in the sea level. The island remained uninhabited throughout. During the rainfall in the monsoon season, the rivers overflow and frequent floods submerges large areas of the land and erodes away the top fertile soil. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has predicted that by the year 2050, 17% of the Bangladesh will be submerged because of the rise in the sea levels if it continues with the current rate. The temperature in the Bay of Bengal area has been observed to rise with an annual rate of 0.4 degrees Celsius and in the last decade, it has been recorded that the sea level rose at a rate of 5 millimeters every year. In October 2018, Hurricane Walaka washed away and removed 11 acres of Hawaiian Island. Although this tiny island was not inhabited, but this is sufficient enough to raise an alarm clock to realize the consequences in the future. After six months, the land reformed and seals were observed to return to the land, indicating sea level gets down sometimes and not rising continuously every time. Before we begin our discussion on the disappearance of islands, we shall see some of the island definitions which will help us to understand about the structure of the island. We shall discuss some interesting aspects about the islands in Pacific. The sad thing is that most of these islands are the receiving ends of the severe and adverse effects of climate change and have been put in the list of endangered to be extinct or submerged by the rising sea levels. Before we begin, let us see some island types categorized by geographical terminology. First one in the list is archipelago. The term originated from the large number of islands in the Asian Sea and the picture shows here the large number of islands Such island groups elsewhere on the other parts of the earth is also termed as archipelago. Other terms worth knowing are bay, lagoon and barrier island. The picture below gives the idea about the bay which is surrounded by three sides by land and one side is open to the ocean. A lagoon is the part of the ocean trapped between the land and barrier island. We have already discussed about corals and the coral reefs in the first part of this lecture. Here we shall see the types of coral reefs and its merits. 
The three main island types are Fringin Reef, Barrier Reef and Atoll. All these appear in succession during the course of island formation from volcanic mountains. The second picture is of a typical shoreline surrounded by fringing corals. The coral reefs appear in different layers in succession, namely inner reef or reef flat followed by reef crest and outer reef or fore reef. These layers rest upon the pre-existing remains of the dead corals which transform into reef limestone due to calcium carbonate deposition by the corals. This represents nature's own engineering of creating solid mass for island formation in the ocean and furthermore building safety mechanism of coral reefs to slow down the biting tidal waves which might eat away the shoreline and submerge the island. We have already discussed about the role of blue carbon vegetation that is mangroves, sea grasses, salt marshes or marshland plants and grasses, macroalgae, seaweeds and alismatides in protecting the coastal shorelines from being washed away by the tides. Atolls or the atoll reefs are circular ring shaped island surrounding a lagoon in the middle and no island in the center. Atoll formation initiates around the volcanic mountain in the form of fringing reefs, that is corals, which grow in the vicinity of the mountain base and surround it forming a ring, which appears more prominent when the volcanic mountain sinks. The mountain part is now replaced by seawater forming a lagoon. The formation of atoll is shown below in the pictures in a sequence wise. Such atolls are numerous in the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean and represent a kind of unique, rich, yet fragile ecosystems. A few examples of living atolls have been shown in the pictures. Coral reefs are extensively found in the Oceania regions in the Pacific Ocean, Central American coastal regions in the Caribbean Sea, and coastal regions in the Indian Ocean. As we have already discussed about the major roles of coral reefs regarding protection of the shoreline, here we continue to discuss about the different types of reefs. As we see in the picture below, the three different main reef structures are reef flat, patch reefs which are present in the lagoon, reef rim which is present on the outer regions of the island extending throughout the rim and here is the structure of fringing reef in which the coral reef grows directly from the shoreline. It is flat and extends right to the beach, grows to several hundred of yards and have been found to harbor seagrass meadows and patch reefs. Another structure is barrier reef. The structure of this kind of reefs are separated from the mainland shoreline by a deep canal or a lagoon. The latter can be several kilometers wide and 30 to 70 meters deep. The offshore outer reef edge extends to the open waters rather than inward to the shoreline of the mainland. Reef barriers are rarer than other kinds of reefs and take comparatively huger time for its formation and nature's extraordinary artistic creation which harbors several millions of aquatic species. The famous Great Barrier Reef in Australia is the example of coral reef barrier and victim of excessive bleaching and loss of corals. Next in the list is flat form reef, also called as patch and found on the continental shelves. A continental shelf is the portion of the continent which is submerged under the shallow sea waters. 
Such regions are favorable breeding grounds for coral and coral reefs. These are characterized by its radial growth pattern and undergo elongation if established on a sand bank. The pictures below represent flat form reefs. K islands are a small, low elevation sandy island on the surface of a coral reef. This type of island occurs in tropical environment throughout the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian and Caribbean oceans. Below is the picture of K sand particles observed under the microscope. Another two pictures are K island structures which are inhabited. K islands are a kind of beginning of formation of island over the coral reefs which ultimately converted into habitable island structures or in simple words baby islands. Now we continue the discussion about the separating islands. It will be easier to understand about the island structures and the severity of the consequences of climate change. The first in the list is Solomon Islands. This tiny Pacific island nation is made of nearly 1000 islands including atolls. You can see its location on the map. The sea level has risen at the rate of 8 mm per year since 1993 and five reef islands have already disappeared. Several well inhabited islands are now suffering dangers of submerging because of receding shorelines. Maldives is a small island nation in the Indian Ocean is an archipelago of 26 atolls in the south to the equator. The average ground elevation from the sea level is just 1.5 meters and is world's lowest lying country. The highest natural point is 5.1 meters from the sea level. With the current speed of rising ocean levels, it is projected that the entire country may disappear by the year 2100. Micronesia is a sub-region of Oceania and composed of thousands of small islands scattered in the western Pacific Ocean. It is composed of four main nations namely Caroline Islands, Gilbert Islands or the Republic of Kiribati, Miraina Islands that is North Miraina Island and Guam under USA administration and Marshall Islands. We have already discussed about several nuclear bomb detonation tests on Marshall Islands on and underground and above in the atmosphere which have already vaporized several islands and caused lethal effects to the fragile ecosystems. Wake Island or Wake Atoll is a coral atoll composed of three islets and a reef surrounding a lagoon in the center located in the western Pacific Ocean in the northwestern region of Micronesia sub-region. It is administered by the U.S. Air Force and primarily used as a stop in the mid-Pacific region for refueling the military aircraft and emergency landing. It is also used for testing missiles and weapons. Marshall Islands is composed of 29 low-lying atolls and 5 isolated islands. It has a total number of 1,156 individual islands composed of limestone and sand. The average ground elevation to the sea level is 2.1 meters. 24 islands are inhabited and the economy runs on service, fishing and agriculture. Three of its islands, Buconian, Erokiol, and Nam, were fully evaporized during the nuclear tests conducted by the US. A recent study reported that some of the Marshall Islands, like Inuvita atolls and Baikini atolls, are still more radioactive than Fukushima and Chernobyl by 10 times in the soil samples tested for plutonium 239 and plutonium 240, although 
60 years have passed since the detonations were conducted. The sea level rise at the rate of 7 mm per year, which is said to be double the global average and will reach up to 7.5 inches by 2030, making it vulnerable to sinking. Furthermore, increasing storm surges and frequent coastal floods aggravate the danger. Palau is another island nation in the Pacific comprising 340 islands located in the South Pacific region. The sea level have risen about 0.35 inches per year since 1993. That is about three times the global average and will continue to rise up to 24 inches by the year 2090. Because of climate change, its shoreline is already affected by the disappearance of native non-stinging jellyfishes. Fiji is another low-lying island nation in the Pacific Ocean, vulnerable to rising sea level and rapidly losing its coastal soils. In the last few decades, some villages have been reported a loss of 15 to 20 meters of shoreline because of loss of mangroves. The sea levels are expected to rise up to 43 centimeters by the year 2050. Not only this, the warmer sea water temperatures have severely affected the coral reefs which have undergone massive bleaching and dying of diseases. Tuvalu is a rapidly shrinking island to the rising sea levels located in remote South Pacific region. It is reported that only 4 km strip of land is remaining for its population of 10,000 and one of the most vulnerable places on this earth. Next in the list is Seychelles, an archipelago island nation of 115 islands located off coast African continent and experiencing an unprecedented rise in the sea levels in the recent years compared to the last 6,000 years of historical events. The rising ocean temperatures and water levels compounded with frequent floods have affected adversely the coastal mangrove forest lines and other blue carbon vegetations. Country's 85% of the development is located on its coastlines. If the sea line rises above just one meter, it would cover most of its inhabited areas, almost 70% of its land. Kiribati is a remote Pacific island nation comprising 32 atolls and one raised coral island, Banaba. Kiribati's fragile geographical assets had been under constant abuse under the colonial powers of the United Kingdom until it became an independent sovereign state in 1979. The raised coral island Banaba was once rich in phosphorus but exhausted in mining by the UK before it released the nation to its independence. The islands are under constant threats to the rising ocean waters disappearing shorelines to the corroding tidal floods, bleaching coral reefs to the warmer ocean waters and even more seriously by the Great Pacific Garbage Island floating towards its pristine coast and polluting the ecosystem. Two of its uninhabited islands, Tebuatarawa and Ebania, disappeared underwater in 1999. And it is feared that the entire country will become completely inhabitable by 2050. Tangier Islands located about 12 kilometers off the coast in the Virginia, United States, only accessible by boat or plane. More than 60% of the island has been lost to the ocean since 1850 and the rest is endangered to be submerged in the next 25 to 40 years. Cook's Island situated off coast New Zealand comprising 15 islands including 6 atolls and 2 reefs. 
all formed of volcanic activity. The island is feared to be submerged by 2090 because of the rising ocean levels. Sismarif Island in Alaska is a small island with a population of just 650 has slowly been disappearing into the sea over the last 50 years, losing 100 feet of the land since 1997. In the pictures, the loss of the island structures since 2000 to 2001 through 2010 and June 2019 is shown. Approximately 300 million tons of plastic waste is generated every year and on current trends it could reach 417 million tons per year by the year 2030. Plastic is mostly used in packaging of materials the main seven types of plastics are PET or polyethylene terphthalate, HDPE or high density polyethylene, PVC or polyvinyl chloride, LDPE or low density polyethylene, PP or polypropylene, and PS or polystyrene. Some of these plastics are recyclable, but some cannot be recycled at all. So, the plastics are recyclable materials is not entirely a true fact. PET, HDPE and PP can be recycled whereas PVC and PS can never be recycled. LDPE is sometimes recycled or left as a garbage or discarded. The two very important questions arise here. The plastics that can be recycled but how many times? And how many times can it be done to obtain the product of acceptable properties? And what happens when it cannot be recycled? According to one report from 1950 to 2018, an estimated 6.3 billion tons of plastic have been produced worldwide. Out of this, only 9% have been recycled till date and the another 12% is incinerated. Recycling of plastics can be done only three to four times and melting of plastics for recycling purpose release toxic fumes. So where does the rest of the plastics go? Plastic waste that are not recycled end up in the landfills and the oceans and when thrown to the ocean, the ocean throws it back. As we can see here in the pictures, Plastic wastes piled up in a landfill, floating in the ocean waters and scattered over a beach. All of these damage the environment and visual appeal. It is estimated that the plastic trash will increase with a total of 20% by the year 2021. Means we need larger landfills or else more plastics to be dumped in the oceans. So the myth that the plastics can be recycled is completely ruled out. Exactly how much plastic waste have we dumped in the ocean so far? It is about 5.25 trillion pieces of trash amounting to millions of tons which is equivalent to 500 jumbo jets that has been reported to be dumped in the oceans. This is referred to as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, also described as the Pacific Trash Vortex. This has formed by a huge concentration of plastic debris floating in the Pacific Ocean and Gaia, that is large system of circulating ocean currents, particularly involved with large wind movements, and has created five enormous patches. Two of these are main and enormous masses of ever-growing garbages namely Eastern Garbage Patch lying between Hawaii and California and the other is Western Garbage Patch extending between Japan and Hawaiian Islands. The size of these patches collectively range between 700,000 km squares that is about the size of Texas to more than 15 million square kilometers that is about the size of Russia.
The fact about garbage patches in the ocean was first discovered and introduced to the public as North Pacific Garbage Patch in the middle of the 1990s by Captain Murray. Despite of the claim that plastics can be recycled, which dominated people's mindset for decades and continues till date, the amount of garbage kept on mounting and being released to the oceans constantly. It is estimated that the ocean plastics grow by 7 to 8 billion kilograms every year, according to a report published in the year 2014. And the amount now exceeding 150 billion kilograms. Plastics do not degenerate in water as it is non-biodegradable. It breaks down into smaller pieces by photodegradation being one of the main reasons and eventually becomes microplastics. Also, the floating mass creates shadow zones to the phytoplanktons and creates hot breeding zones for bacterial and pathogens besides threat to the aquatic animals which either get entangled into this plastic or ingest it causing fatal consequences. One entangled turtle is shown in this picture. According to one report published in the year 2001 by C.J. Murray, which says, plastic pieces in the center of our ocean gyres outnumbers living marine planktons and are passed up the food chain to reach all marine life. The tiny microplastics not only come from the plastic waste garbage, but also from synthetic clothing nylon, acrylic, polyester, etc. When these clothes are washed, it releases tiny micro and nano sized plastic fibers into the drainage and practically impossible to filter out before releasing into the oceans. Sewage treatment plants, although claim to remove about 98% of the incoming plastic fragments but cannot rule out micro and nano sized plastic fibers. Furthermore, these micro and nano sized plastic fibers have also been found in watershed, river, lake, besides the ocean waters. The micro and the nano plastic fibers and beads are ingested by small aquatic creatures, further by large fishes and other aquatic animals hence enter to our food chain. Here in the schematics, we can see how it reaches to our plate on the table and enter into the human body. As we all know, plastics are non-biodegradable and take more than 100 to 500 years to disintegrate. It has created a havoc already. Another aspect to this scenario is the chemicals which are used to manufacture plastics. Some of these include the phthalates, bisphenol A or BRA, polybrominated diphenyl ether, PBDE, and have been extensively used in the manufacturing of food packaging, medical devices, flooring materials, bottles, perfumes, costumes, etc., and have been constantly released to the water bodies and the oceans. This has been exposed to the human beings through food chains since very long time. Approximately 95% of the adults in the United States have been found to contain detectable levels of BRA in their urine and continues to grow. BPA and pathalates have been correlated with many health complications. BPA binds to the protein globulin which normally bind to the reproductive hormones such as androgens and the estrogens and disrupt the balance between the two as well as the metabolism. This severely affects the reproductive maturity, fertility, damage to the immune system, etc. Women and children are the worst affected from bisphenol A. 
Bisphenol A affects gene expression related to the thyroid hormone which plays vital role in the metabolism, growth and development of the human body and eventually the hyperthyroidism. Now we see another part of the story where we are leading to. This chart presents a broader viewpoint of plastic economy and its disposal. The figures may differ from one discussed in the previous slides as the data is generated through diverse set of resources. But we can appreciate the comparative viewpoint which indicates almost 2 billion people living within the 50 kilometers of the coastline and affected by plastic garbage. The top four countries producing plastics are China with 60 million tons, United States of America with 38 million tons followed by Germany and Brazil with 14.5 and 12 million tons respectively. USA, UK, Germany, Canada, Australia and Japan are among the top producers of plastics. On the other hand, a study conducted in 2019, it was reported that Asia followed by Africa Latin America and Caribbean are the top countries reported for mismanaged plastic waste. While we have already seen that only 7-9% to of the plastics are actually being recycled, how come the largest producers do not rank at the top? In 2015, a study was published in the top research journal Science regarding the Great Pacific Garbage Patch where exactly all the garbage coming from. The article put six primary countries to the world information map responsible for, namely China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. Following this report, the Ocean Conservancy emphasized the previous report that these countries dump most of the plastics mounting to the garbage patch that all other countries combined together. This news remained in top and prime focus to the world until something significant happened in 2018. China said no to the plastic waste import. Until January 2018, China imported most of the world's plastic and kept on dumping to its landfill or the oceans. In January 2018, China declared ban to the plastic import concerning about contamination and pollution and decided not to buy any recycled plastic that was not 99.5% pure. Plastic waste have been exported and counted as recycled by the US Environmental Protection Agency US EPA, and the waste and recycling industry for decades. The US Census Bureau data shows exports to China and other countries dating back to 1992. It was difficult to track exactly how the global waste trade works and it came very prominent after China's denial that broadly the western rich countries did pay money to dispose the trash in the landfills in the poorer Asian nations. According to one report, China had been the largest dumping ground for plastic garbage since 1992 and in the year as of in 2016 approximately 600,000 tons of plastic garbage was imported in a month under the bluff plastics for recycle. After China banned the import the trade shifted to other Asian nations that is Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, Sri Lanka, India and so on. Often we have seen numerous pictures of garbage landfills on various top magazines and internet sites maligning the country's image at the global front. The great myth of plastic recycling waste management, clean and green waste are once again busted. Finally, the Asians began to speak and react. The dark trade which continued for more than 25 years had to come an end. In July 2019, 
The South Asian nation said a big no to the import of plastic garbage and decided to crack down the trade by implementing the laws. To ensure their commitment, they began to ship it back. Massively supported by the campaign which is spread nationwide in many countries and other governments to take similar initiatives. Malaysia planned to send back about 3,300 tons of plastic trash back to its origin countries, USA and Canada. The Philippines and Cambodia also joined the league. In a huge Indonesia sends back hundreds of shipping containers full of waste back to the US, Germany, France, Hong Kong and Australia in the September 2019. Followed by this determined retaliation from the Asian nations, the European Union Commission considers a ban on plastic packaging. India already declared a ban on single-use plastics which include plastic packaging bags, spoon, cups, straws and bottles in October 2nd, 2019. The European Union Commission considers a ban on plastic packaging in January 2020. India bans six different types of single-use plastics, plastic bags, cups, plates, small bottles, straws and certain types of sachets in the October 2019. In a major breakthrough, an innovative method for constructing roads was developed and patented by a college professor, Rajgopalan Vasudevan of Thyagrajan College of Engineering in India. His method created a better, more durable, very cost-effective, faster road construction and saving the environment at the first place from the dangerous plastics. The bitumen material used for road construction is mixed with plastic waste one tenth of its mass, the saving bituminous and reducing waste amount simultaneously. The constructed roads showed far less wear and tear to a significant extent. He implemented the idea of utilizing plastic waste to build roads inside the college premises in 2002 and reported that the roads are still going strong. Chennai was among the first cities globally to adopt the technology in a big way when the municipality commissioned 1,000 kilometers of plastic roads in 2004. Since then, all major municipalities in India have experimented with the technology including Pune, Mumbai, Surat, Indore, Delhi, Lucknow, etc. In December 2019, India has built 21,000 miles of roads using plastic waste. Until now, the country has almost 33,700 kilometers of plastic roadways. That means every one kilometer used 1 million plastic bags. At last, some good news about plastic waste. Road authorities around the world are starting to use it in their roads as well. In the next better step is to switch to the natural fibers for clothing such as jute, cotton, kenef or hemp, silk, bamboo, wool, linen, abaca, flax, mohair, etc. and biodegradable polymers to reduce the non-biodegradable waste. Needless to explain this title that pollution, global warming and heating and anthropogenic activities have put the entire existence of life on this earth at a great risk. We shall now see some of these consequences in brief. Ever since the beginning of industrial revolution in Europe, which started with burning of coal to produce steam and energy, the burning of coal produced smoke and black carbon soot which formed a black coating on almost every standing structures and constructions, including tree trunks. The peppered moth in the ecosystem, distant Betularia typica with, with white body color and distant Betularia carbonaria 
with black body color was observed to have undergone a phase of evolution. During the industrial phase with coal burning, the tree trunks becoming dark with adhered black carbon suit would reveal the Biston Betularia typica more prominent over Biston Betularia carbonaria, making the former to easily fall into prey to the birds, whereas the black peppered moth would hide easily in camouflage. The number of white peppered moth declined severely to the extent of extinction. After a few decades, the electricity was invented and the coal was replaced by machines running on electricity which no longer produced the black suit to cover the tree trunks. And the latter became bright which no longer could help black peppered moth to camouflage but the white colored peppered moth would easily hide in camouflage. This made the black peppered moth an easy prey to the birds and the number declined severely. This was an early example of adverse effect of anthropogenic activities on the extinction of the species. Next in the list is extinction of dodo bird and timbalako trees in the Mauritius island. Because of extensive hunting, the dodo bird got extinct from the island in 17th century. In the later years, during 1973, it was observed that the Tambalako trees were dying out. Only 13 specimens were left and all were estimated some 300 years old and new plants were not found to be germinating. Researchers discovered that the Tambalako seeds have hard woody cover making it impervious to germinate on its own. The seeds when fed by dodo would pass through its digestive tract softening the outer hard cover under the action of digestive juices and crushing forces of the bird's gizzard. The seeds after released out in feces when meet favorable conditions find it easy to germinate and grow. Disappearance of the bird dodo led to the extinction of the entire species of Tembalako trees. Later on, it was experimented with several other birds and native turtle species by feeding the fruits and seeds and it was observed that the seeds could be possible to germinate with the help of turtles. This shows that disappearance of one species could lead to the disappearances of another species. Climate change, pollution and anthropogenic activities are responsible for the extinction of 318 species. About 75 species were already wiped out by human beings during the 19th century. 304 more species are under threat of disappearance, out of which 60% are of birds and 83% are of mammals. Approximately one species is vanishing every year. It is feared that if the human activities do not stop, 20% of all species on the earth would become extinct. A few examples are shown here. Below is the fishes died in dead zone. On the top right side is lemon damselfish, which is a coral associated species and have been found to be severely affected because of coral bleaching. Bramble K is the another species which was declared extinct in the year 2016. This tiny mouse species was native of Bramble K and its habitat was lost because of the rise in the sea level. Asia Pacific region is the home for almost half the population of corals found on the earth. These corals have been badly affected by bleaching because of warmer waters, radioactive radiators, release of chemical sewage and plastics. 89% of these reefs are suffering from diseases caused by fouling of plastic garbage released to the ocean. Whereas the disease spread in the plastic-free reefs 
is only 4% of the corals. A diseased coral entangled with plastic sheet is shown in the picture at the top left side. Down below this picture is of dried and suffocated ecosystem of a mangrove forest site. The upward growing mangrove roots which tend to entangle the plastics thrown by the ocean tides which cause fouling and the spread of the diseases and dying out of inhabited species. The rest two pictures are of Lysen albatross and Midway Atoll in the Pacific. The albatrosses inhabit at this atoll and the population is about 1.5 million. It has been found that all these birds are likely to have plastic in their gastrointestinal tract. Approximately one third of the chicks die because of plastic poisoning. Midway Atoll receives huge amount of plastics from the Pacific Garbage Patch which is damaging its coral reefs which are home for 5700 species of echinodermites and other marine invertebrates which provide the fine balance in the complicated food chain in the reefs, shoreline and the oceans. Species of plants and animals find direct threat from human activities as for example excessive hunting. Since 1600 the reliable geological records began which reveals that 1% of the higher animal species alive at that time have been extinct to over hunting and poaching and another 2.5% of the existing animals are now in danger. Many sewage plant treatments are still not capable of breaking down many harmful chemicals and hormones present in the pharmaceuticals, perfumes and other synthetic substances entering the wastewater stream and reaching to the oceans. These chemicals cause mutation in the reproductive cells and became one of the prime reasons behind extinction of many frog and fish species. The large aquatic and marine animals such as turtles, cetaceans and mammals fall into prey of entanglement, suffocation and death. 250 species of marine animals are affected by entanglement. 86% of all sea turtles, 44% of seabirds, 43% of all marine animals and 22% of all cetaceans are facing this severe condition all because of plastic garbage. Eroding shoreline also erodes away the seagrass areas. The white spotted puffers which live in the seagrass areas are now disappearing. This brings us to conclude the fourth part of this lecture. Here you have an assignment question. Which of the changes in environment do you find dangerously serious and need immediate solution and why? You can write one to two paragraphs supporting your answer and send to my email. Let us now continue to the part five and the last part of this lecture.